Well, last week, uh, I was blessed to be able to get some thank you cards from some college students who our church had helped go to a retreat earlier this year. And as I was reading through those thank you cards, I, I just began to think about how sometimes it's really little things that have have great impact. And some of the notes I I received, one guy said, I was not only supplied with an amazing opportunity to grow with my religion, but I was allowed to spread my religion with others. Another one said, since I'm in college, it's not too common to see people acting the way young Christian men should be acting. This was a refreshing experience, and I can happily say that I'm now fully engaged at Chi Alpha, which is the college ministry. The people I met through this program have changed the way I see college kids. Without this experience in Chi Alpha, I would not be as close to Christ as I am today. Another one said, this conference was very important to me. I was facing multiple dilemmas and struggled with trusting God fully. At this conference, God spoke to me. I could clearly hear him say, trust me, I will not shortchange you. Give me what you are holding so that I can give you something better. Without your help, I wouldn't have gotten this experience. And so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You know, sometimes I think we do tend to take the little things for granted. When I talked to the leader, he said that our church was able to sponsor six students to go to this conference, and we paid for the fuel for them to drive there and for a meal for them to eat. And he shared with me the report of the conference that two of the students who we sponsored were international students. Two students accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. One student got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and those two that got saved have now plugged in to the ministry there at Chi Alpha. Like I said, sometimes it's the little things. I want to read a story in the Old Testament today. I'm going to let the story kind of tell itself, uh, but I'm going to pause and just in, in, in expand on things as we read it. Being in 2 Kings chapter 5, it starts, Now Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. I want to pause here and just point out this major contradiction, this major difference in the characters we've met in this story. The first person we met was Naaman. He was a commander in the king's army. He's described as a valiant soldier. He's highly regarded. He's one of influence and power. The other person we meet was a young woman, Scripture says, who was taken captive. She's a servant. She's a slave from Israel. One is the picture of power. The other is the picture uh, of weakness. A young woman who is a captive in that day, just what all that meant. No rights, no authority, nothing. With this one who had all things, he, was, he had the ear of the king. And this young girl, a little thing that she did. You see, it wasn't a big thing. It was a little thing. She said to her mistress, Naaman's wife, if only Naaman would go to the prophet and be healed from his leprosy. That comment put into a chain of events that is pretty incredible as we continue on in these verses. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter he took to the king of Israel read with this letter, I'm sending my servant Naaman to you that you may cure him of his leprosy. From the mouth of a meaningless slave girl to a diplomatic interaction between kings in no time. Sometimes greatness comes from the little things. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robe and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me? When Elisha, 
the man of God, heard that the king of Israel torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me. And he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. Do you see the story? We go from almost the, the fear of war, the king of Israel with the king of Aram, and, 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 and their, their correspondence to the prophet. This message, this little thing gets into the right position. The prophet asks why the king has torn his robe. When he hears the why, that, that someone needs to be healed from leprosy, that he's the one who was recommended for this, Elijah responds, send him to my house. Not only does he say, send him to my house, but he gives him the solution for his problem. Elisha sends his messenger to say to Naaman, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored. It's sometimes just the little things. But watch, watch Naaman's reactions because, see, oftentimes we're looking for the big things. Oftentimes that's all we can see are the big things, the monumental things, the incredible things. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord as God and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Little things set big things in motion, but expectations of big things tried to steal the power of the little things. Naaman had this expectation that the prophet would come out and he would say this grand prayer, raise his hands, touch him, and heal him. He thought it would be this monumental moment. And Naaman gave him these simple instructions. Go to Jordan seven times. But that's not too complicated. Naaman said, I could have done that where I was. Why did I come here to do that? Sometimes we're too busy looking for the big things. Not only does he not do it, but he becomes angry because it's not the big things. But see, God uses the small things to do the incredible things. And Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you to wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him and his flesh was restored and he became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all of the attendants went back to the man of God, stood before him and said, now I know there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. Do you see what happened? The, the servants say, Naaman, you are looking for a great thing, but, but maybe, just maybe, there's something in the small things. Don't miss the small things. Don't ignore the small things. So Naaman does the simple thing. He puts himself in the river, and God does the incredible thing. He heals him, and Naaman professes that, that the God of Israel must be the only true God, all from the little things. A servant girl saying to her mistress, hey, what if your husband goes and sees the prophet and gets killed from leprosy? I'm compelled sometimes that we get consumed with the big things. I've been in reading the book of John. and John chapter 6, we have the story of the fish and loaves. And, and we see how it's presented. There's this multitude, this crowd of 5,000. And the disciples are wondering, how are we going to feed all these people? We can't afford to buy enough food from all these people. But what happens to do the great things is that one finds a small thing. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter, the bro Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? God took those five loaves and those two fish, and he fed the multitude. Not just five loaves and two fish, but five small loaves. And five 
small fish from a small boy to do the miraculous, to reveal the power and goodness of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In the New Living Translations, it says, My dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. I want you to hear that today. No thing, nothing that you do for the Lord, no matter how grand or how small, is ever useless. We may not see kings moved and leprosy healed, but we may have no idea the effect of the action, the word, the thing in which we've done. Galatians 6 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have every opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Keep on doing. That conversation, that card, that door opening, that lawn mowed, that Bible truth spoken, that gift, that prayer, that act of service, you have no idea what might compel kings and reveal the power of God in your life and those around you. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, may he turn his face toward you and grant you his peace. And may you be diligent. May you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Be blessed.